In this video, we're going to ask the question, should I be trading Bitcoin? We're going to go through and talk a little bit about Bitcoin, and then we're going to talk about some alternatives that you might want to consider instead of Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin's been all the rage. If you look everywhere on the Internet, you're going to see ads for trading Bitcoin all over the place because Bitcoin has made a big splash in the industry. So the question is, and I get a lot of questions, uh, people asking me, should I be trading Bitcoin? Now, there's several ways to trade Bitcoin. I've traded Bitcoin for a number of years and had some pretty good success with it, taken some profits out, used it to uh, you know, pay some bills, pay some tuition for my son's college, and that type of thing. But should we be getting into Bitcoin now, or are there some better alternatives? And that's the question I really want to answer here is, are there some better alternatives? First of all, if you've been uh, listening to Bitcoin uh, news lately, you've known that the uh, CME and the CBOE, Chicago uh, exchanges, have announced that they're going to start trading Bitcoin on their exchanges. Well, let's take a look at that for just a second. This is the CBOE, and as you can see, this is the Bitcoin contract, and this is Bitcoin. Now, one of the things you want to look at when you're looking at a market to trade is how active it is, how, how much does it trend. Now, Bitcoin in the past has trended significantly um, in unparalleled uh, bullish trends, right? I mean, it's just rocketed up. And so people have been buying Bitcoin and making all kinds of money. But that seems to have come to a slow down. I'm not going to say a stop, but it's significantly slowed down in that massive increase in value. And if we just kind of look back in Bitcoin, you can see that right lately, we've had a, this was a nice little run right through here. Uh, during, you know, it was what, how long did that last? That was from, from this low point was uh, uh, 1222 until 1227. Uh, so, you know, four days, three, four days, this market had kind of a nice little rally in here. But overall, it's not really done much. It's just kind of been going sideways a lot lately. And in reality, over the longer term time, you can see we've had a lot of downtrends in here. And people who have held Bitcoin uh, have lost a lot of money. And so uh, you can see that ever since it's become active, which is this first day right here, it's become active on the CBOE market, Bitcoin is kind of just slowly descended in price, a little bit of a rally in here, but then gave it all back as the market just kind of has been wandering sideways. Now, the question is, should I be trading uh, Bitcoin? Now, there's a number of ways to be trading Bitcoin. You can hold Bitcoin in individual dollars and not in a leveraged account like we're looking at here. When you trade Bitcoin on the futures exchanges, you are in a leveraged account. So let's come in here and take a look at that. We're going to look at the key on Bitcoin very quickly here. I want to show you something. The day margin for trading Bitcoin on the CBOE, which is a single contract, you can see it's a contract size of one, one Bitcoin, the day margin is $8,291. So that means to, to, to trade it just in the day session, you have to have an account with $8,291 in it. All right, so that would be for day trading. And then a maintenance margin is $13,000. The initial margin is $6,000. Now, what does that mean? That means if you're going to hold it overnight, you're going to go from $8,000 to $6,000. So like if you're just going to hold it over the, the, the open and the close. So you can see right down here we have the open time is 4.30. The close time is 4.15. So it's going to close at 4.15. It's going to open right back up at 4.30. So only it's, it's only closed for 15 minutes. But if you hold it over that 15-minute time frame, right here, and that's Eastern Standard Time, you're going to go from needing $8,000 in your account to only needing $6,000 in your account. Now, if you hold it one more day beyond that, they're going to jump you up to $13,000, okay? So you're going to have to have a maintenance margin in there. So they're going to say, well, he's holding this longer than just one day. He's going to hold this over for two or three days. It's starting to get a little bit more risky. So they're going to require you to have a maintenance margin in there of $13,000 in your account to trade Bitcoin on the Chicago Board of uh, uh, the Chicago, uh, the CBOE, which is the Chicago Board of Options Exchange is what that is. And so then we're going to come in here and we want to look at some other alternatives. Okay, what if we say, wow, well, that's a lot of money, uh, the day margin, $8,291. But let's take a look at the leverage that this market has. If we come in here and just draw a quick dollar calculator from, let's say, entry, just this trend from this point to this point. That was a $4,400 move in Bitcoin. As one Bitcoin increased in value $4,400. To make that trade, you would need to have $8,291 in your account okay, to make that trade. So that's kind of the, the trading Bitcoin on the exchanges. Now, the other question is, should I be holding Bitcoin in a cash account? Now, there's a, there's a very popular website. The one I use is called Coinbase. And you can come into Coinbase and you can just buy Bitcoins. All right. So you can just say, well, I want to buy. You don't need to buy an entire Bitcoin. You can buy however much 
percentage of a Bitcoin you want. You want to invest $300 into Bitcoin, you can just buy $300. You want to invest $500, $600, $700 in Bitcoin, you can do that. And they have a very nice little app that goes on your phone and you can track it and you can watch it. But that said, I want to show you something else. Let's talk about an alternate option, something that maybe we could look at instead of Bitcoin, something that might be a little bit easier for us to get into, uh, not requiring an $8,000 or a $13,000 maintenance account. Let's come back over here, and this is just the futures market. This is trading in the futures market, which is where the Bitcoin trades. But let's come up here and just look at some additional, some other traditional markets. Let's first, let's look at the S&P 500. What about the S&P 500? Why not just trade the S&P? Let's come in here and look at that on a daily basis. Look at this. This is what the S&P has been doing over the last, this is since August, August 31st. This is what the S&P has been doing since August. All right. Now let's just quickly draw a calculator on there. And let's draw that calculator up there and see how much money that would be. Well, that was eleven, twelve thousand dollars $12,000 that the E-mini S&P made during that time frame from August until now, which is, of course, today is January 4th. So from the from August to the first of the year, one, two, three, four months, this market has moved $13,000. So you say, well, okay, that's great, Land. That looks wonderful. How much money did I need to invest to make that happen? Well, let's come over and look at the key. Same thing we did with the Bitcoin. And look at this. We have a day margin of $500. So all you have to do is have $500 in your account, and you can execute positions on a day basis uh, in the E-mini S&P. So you can come in and day trade the E-mini S&P with a $500 account. Now, of course, you'd want more than that. You wouldn't want to have, you know, be bumping your head against that $500 margin just to have one account. But you could do that with $500. Whereas over, what was it over there on the, on the Bitcoin? A significantly much larger amount, right? And look at the initial margin. $4,950. That's if you want to keep it overnight, and then if you want to keep it longer than overnight, 4500 actually goes down, whereas Bitcoin goes up. So keeping uh, the E-mini S&P over a longer period of time, they require less money in your account, $4,500, to execute one position, uh, one contract in the E-mini S&P. So this is a nice alternative. Let's let's go down to look at a smaller time frame. That's the daily chart. Let's go down to a range bar 10. Range bar, of course, is a more of a chart that we'd use if we were considering day trading. It's a much smaller time frame. And so this would be just what's happened over since this is uh, uh, 6 o'clock p.m. on the 1st of January. We got our, the markets opened and we got our first signal. And this is what the market's done just since the 1st of January. And that's the 4th of January. So that's three days of trading. You can see in here, one, two, three. And if I just draw my dollar calculator in there from, from basically from where we'd get in with that arrow to where it's currently trading, that was a $2,387 move. And remember, I only had to have $500 tied up to execute that position and make that trade. So the E-mini S&P has been a wonderful market lately and has been trending like uh, like crazy and doing quite well. And the great thing about trading uh, on the futures exchange is that we can take a short position and make you know, just as easily as we can go long, which means that we can just say, well, if we think the market's going to go down, we sell first, buy back later, and that's a $912 move right there just within one day, and there's no penalty for taking a short position in the futures market. You can go short just as easily as you can go long. So you sell first, buy back low later. Of course, remember, the only way we make money is to buy low, sell high. So we sell high, buy back low later. And we make the profit of 912. Now, of course, that number doesn't represent commissions and fees, and none of the numbers that I've shown here so far do. Let's go look at a little shorter time frame. Let's come in here. This is the range bar 10. This is the range bar 8. Now, the range bar 8 is just, a, it's just zooming in a little bit closer. And here's the range bar 6. Uh, and the range bar 6 has given us a, a couple of additional uh, entry points. This is just last night. The market rallied from here to here. Uh, through this morning. That's a $625 move. Now the great thing about this is we're getting a buy signal right in here coming in looking at this uh, E-mini S&P right now looking for another long position anticipating an additional rise in price. So we're going to watch this market and as you can see it's a much easier market to trade than is the Bitcoin market. Bitcoin, you know, if we come down to the range bar 6, it's kind of a jigged, jagged thing. It's moving all over the place. Uh, even the longer term time frame, you know, we've not been as easily able to find good trends in the Bitcoin like we have been in other markets, um, particularly the E-mini S&P. So the E-mini S&P has been a beautiful market. And this would be an alternative market that I would recommend that you consider trading over and above Bitcoin. Now, 
there's also other markets. Once you get into the futures market and you open up your futures exchange, you've got a whole world of things that you can trade. Bitcoin being a currency, but you can also trade the British pound. Now, here's the British pound. You could trade the British pound. Let's come in and look at the key on the British pound. The day margin on British pound is $990, significantly lower than what you're seeing in Bitcoin. We come in here and let's look at the Euro FX. This is the Euro FX uh, foreign currency. Uh, let's come in and look at the key on that one. Euro FX day margin $1,155. Initial margin $2,300. Maintenance margin $2,000. Significantly lower than what you're seeing in Bitcoin. Again, the great thing about the futures market is that you can trade lots of different things, not just Bitcoin. So we got the Japanese yen. You can come in and trade that one if we look at the key real quick. You can see that we got a day margin of 1,237. And then we've got, uh, if we come in here, let's go back to our charts. And if we slide down here, this is, look, we can even trade crude oil. Crude oil is a relatively large market, but it trends nicely off. Oftentimes we get really nice trends in, in crude oil. So this is a range bar 8 chart in crude oil. Let's just draw a quick dollar calculator from where we got in to where we get out on crude oil. Again, this doesn't represent commissions and fees, but that's a $1,440 move in what? That's a one, that's basically a two-day move. So in two days, $1,440. Now, well, what was our investment? We look at the key again. The day margin, $1,000. So $1,000 is all you needed to maintain this position in crude oil. And you could have traded crude oil with a $1,000 position. Overnight, initial margin is $2,300. Maintenance margin, $2,000. So very simply, if you put five grand into an account, you could have traded this very simply. And from this arrow to this arrow, and that was yesterday, basically yesterday, see, $1,440. Now that number doesn't represent commissions and fees. Let's go down and look at something else. This is gold. You can, of course, if you're trading in the futures market, you trade all these fun markets. This is what's so great about the futures market. You get all these fun things you can trade. Now, this is a range bar eight. Let's look at the daily chart first. This is gold. This is just the price of gold. And of course, if you want to trade gold, this is a great way to do it. You can buy and sell just as easily as you can. Uh, you can make money when the market goes down just as easily as you can make money when the market goes up. And of course, this is um, this is the movements that we're seeing here from this arrow to this arrow. That was about a five thousand dollar move, and then from this arrow to this arrow, that's about a seven thousand dollar move. And that's out on the daily chart. We come down to a smaller term time frame range bar chart. You can see some of these smaller moves. Uh, in here from this arrow to this arrow is about a $400 move. From this arrow to this arrow up here, that's about a $500 move. Now let's go look at the key. How much does it cost us to trade gold? Well, the day margin is $1,500. The initial margin is $4,400. Maintenance margin is $4,000. So less than $5,000 you can get in and start trading gold and, um, you know, trading gold on a uh, on the futures market. This is a great way to start investing in some of these other alternative markets. Uh, you know, Bitcoin's got you excited and you thought, thought Bitcoin was great. Again, you can trade Bitcoin over here, but the day margin's $8,000. You know, initial margin is 6000 maintenance margin 13000 There are other markets in here that you can trade that you might very much enjoy trading. Now, if we come down here and look at the list, there's all kinds of markets in here that I haven't got open right now that we can open up and trade. Look at this. All the currencies, Australian dollar. We've even got feeder cattle and live cattle. We can trade cattle in here. We can trade ethanol if you want to. You can trade corn. You can trade uh, the Euro-Japanese yen crosses. You can trade natural gas. We've got lean hogs. Look at that. That would be fun to trade, right? Come in, trade a few lean hogs in here. Trade a little uh, lumber, maybe. Maybe come in and trade the Mexican peso. What about trading uh, palladium or platinum? You know, not always silver and gold. There's some other metals out here you can trade too. We got the Russell 2000 in here, the S&P 500. We got the mini Dow in here, which is really awesome. There's silver, there's soybeans, soybean meal, soybean oil. Look at that. We've got the U.S. T bonds. You want to start trading T bonds? Here, come in here and start trading T bonds. What about wheat? We can even trade wheat in here. So there are some alternatives in here, some better ways to trade than just Bitcoin. So if you've been all excited about Bitcoin and thought Bitcoin was a great way to trade, and it has been in the past, but there's also some alternatives to Bitcoin and some other ways of investing and trading that you might also enjoy. Now, if you want to get started, I've, I've put here at the end of this video, uh, I'll show you how you can get started trading some of these other markets. Very simple. You just need the software and open up an account, and I'm going to show you how we're going to do that right here next. The number one question I get when people watch my videos is they want to know what software platform I'm using and what indicators I'm using. First and foremost, if you come to our website, TradeMentors.com, you'll notice that we have a section here called Tools for Traders. If you click on Tools for Traders, the software tools in here are listed. And you can see the recommended trading tools. We have the live trading platforms that we use. These are from Track and Trade, Track and Trade Live Futures, and Track and Trade 
Forex. If you click these more info buttons, you can find out more information about the platforms we're using. I also use a plug-in to the live futures version that is called the Bulls and Bears. That's the Bulls and Bears is what turns the price bars red, yellow, and green and gives me the Elliott Wave uh, blue light system. And so that's a plug-in into the live version of Track and Trade, and it works on both uh, the live futures as well as the live Forex. Now some research tools that we love and that we have here listed as well are the Trade Miner tools. This is Trade Miner for stocks, futures and Forex. This is one of the research tools that helps us identify the fundamental nature of markets. And then of course we have NewsMiner. NewsMiner is the current active uh, information, scours the internet, tells you what the current news is on any given stock, future, or Forex, and then ranks them which ones or which markets are in play. So again, if you want to have a little bit of information about the tools that we use here at Trade Mentors, come to our website www.tradementors.com and click on the Tools for Traders button.